All right, we're in chapter five. We've got six layers of earth, and we're studying them. We're studying earth, not just to study earth in a geography, geology class, but we're studying earth so that we can compare it and think about other worlds. The other planets in our solar system, some moons of interest in our solar system, and then to think about other worlds that are going around other stars. Okay, so one thing we realize is that the air we breathe the air we feel is very important to us. We go about our business and we don't think, where did this air come from? What is this air? Where did that moon come from? We'll get that out of here. So we're thinking about it. And uh, as we think about it, we know Earth is hot inside. So here's a model. We crack it open and look, it's hot inside. But we know that as we, as we look at it, we, we see the surface. But deep, deep down inside, there's like this cannonball inside. Iron, some nickel, spinning around inside an ocean of liquid iron, right? And then around that is some hot rock, the mantle, where this convection the heat rises, cools, and sinks, moves the surface around, releasing gases. Moon, smaller, formed about the same time Earth did, and has since cooled. It was hot inside too, but it's cooled because of its size. So let's take a look. I mean, if you think about all these different worlds, what does it take? Some have, some have atmospheres, some don't. They're different. Let's look at it. So for an atmosphere, a world needs three things. Now again, there's more complexity to all this. So we're hitting some key ideas, some ways to start thinking about it. If you want more, you need chemistry, physics, biology, and study things like that, meteorology, geology. But let's just hit some ideas, three things. So it should be hot inside. If it's hot inside, you'll have volcanism, right? Cracking of the surface stuff coming up through it, volcanic mountains, releasing gas from the inside. So somehow this gas here around this world came from inside the planet. Right? We need enough gravity because gravity is holding the gas here. Otherwise, it would just fly right off the planet. But it's gravity. And you've got gravity, I've got gravity, we don't have much, right? So we need enough gravity to keep the gas from flying off. Gravity holds the atmosphere, okay? And some worlds will have more gravity, and some worlds will have more, less gravity. And when we talk about gravity, we're talking about the surface gravity, that gravity right there that's holding that gas. All right, so that makes sense, right? Uh, come from inside, so it's gotta be hot inside. You need enough gravity, so it's gotta hold on to that gas. But you also can't have it too hot. If you move that world near the sun, it's gonna start getting hot. So it's not too hot, hot gas, is fast gas. And fast gas can be little rockets and they'll just fly right off, right? So what, what determines these things? Well, we've got to be hot inside. Age is one thing. Eventually it'll cool. Size is going to be a key factor. Something larger is going to retain its heat longer, have more radioactive material to decay longer. Enough gravity. Well, size is also related, right? Its mass Size is related to how much stuff is there, density, some other factors. Okay, so that's that's connected too, isn't it? What about the surface not being too hot? Well, it's distance from our star, Sun. And so we're going to talk about those things a lot as we explore the solar system. So keep that in mind. It should make a lot of sense. Let's go over here and talk about our Earth's atmosphere. So in this short video, we're going to talk about how where its atmosphere came to be. Just kind of a simple few steps to, to get a sense of the origin or the evolution, how it changed. First, as Earth came together, think of all these particles building up. We'll get more into that chapter seven. There was gas around it. Uh, low mass gas like hydrogen, helium, is fast gas. It's kind of like uh, if you push a little kid, they'll go off fast and you push a big person, they're not going to go flying off fast. So, so things like hydrogen and helium, they tend to just fly off the planet. There's some other gases there, and there's geologic time to talk about in here. But, you know, if it wasn't the original gas, if we're not breathing the gas that came with the planet, where does gas come from? Where does gas come from? 
And we'll talk about those basic steps over here in a moment. And then we're going to lead, our, lead ourselves up to the current atmosphere. So kind of the original gas, a lot of it flew away, whatever was there. But then there's some source of other gas and some transformation of that gas that we'll talk about. And then we've got our current atmosphere, which we'll study in the next video. Okay, so let's kind of walk this through and let's do it in five steps. Something easy to, to start us out in our understanding of where Earth's atmosphere came from. So we said it's hot inside, all right? And it's hot inside, that creates convection in the mantle, hot stuff rising, cooling, sinking, moving around the surface. And hot creates gas. Just heat up some water, you'll get some steam, all right? It makes the molecules jiggle faster, break apart, and they become a gas, all right? And the gas gets released through volcanism. Volcanism cracks or volcanic mountains. And that releases gas. Now, what kind of gas? Lots of carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, or nitrogen, which tends to live in pairs. OK, lots of that. And there's other stuff that smells. You don't need too much sulfur to smell the sulfur. Um, so we've got that. All right, so we've got a hot planet creating gas inside, getting released through the cracks in the volcanic mountains, volcanism, into the air. But we don't, we don't want to breathe a whole bunch of that stuff. That's kind of a, a nasty atmosphere. In fact, at, at, at the uh, early age of the uh, Earth, there was about one hundred times more gas than now. It was a hundred times more gas in the atmosphere. So ta imagine, take a, a bottle of water, empty it out. You've got air in there, cap it, right? Now fill it with a hundred times more gas. What's going to happen? Obviously, it's going to explode because the pressure is intense. So that's a crazy environment, and yet we're going to find a world that's very much like that, OK? We're going to find a world that's like that. But luckily, happily, our atmosphere changed. We had something special. Maybe other worlds did too. But somehow, we managed to keep this, at least for now. And that which we had, I'll of course, draw this not to scale. But we've got oceans, right? So oceans. Water, liquid water, OK? So we've got oceans. And where did that come from? Well, likely comets slammed into us, brought water from way out in the solar system. And when you drink a, a glass of water, you could be drinking a glass of comet juice, right? Uh, so somehow we got oceans and we got water. And we've got this gas going around. Where does that gas go? Well, you can do an experiment. You can take a beaker of water, put it into a container, and fill that container with, say, carbon dioxide. You fill it, and the more and more gas you fill in, the more that gas goes into the water, it gets squeezed, that pressure builds up, the same pressure that makes a bottle explode will squeeze that, that carbon dioxide right into the water. So the o oceans absorb So now you got a carbonated ocean and that's that's where 7up uh, was created right there. All right, so we got that. And then what happens? You so it absorbs CO2, so you're getting less CO2 here. Right? Less pressure. And it's down here. What's step 4 then? This is key. And it's green. Why is it green? Because carbon dioxide got split. Now you may know this from a biology class. Sunlight comes in, you've got carbon dioxide, creates this process, a synthesis, a light synthesis, a photosynthesis, wherein carbon goes to the plants, the leaves and roots, things like that, and animal shells, carbon-based organisms, right? Shells, things like that. So there's a process where the carbon of carbon dioxide goes there and builds up life, and the oxygen 
the oxygen goes back into the atmosphere. So here's this cycle, this process, and then there's a breakdown of carbon dioxide where we release the oxygen back. And then you know that about trees and plants releasing oxygen. Okay. And so what does that leave us? Well, we've absorbed a lot of that carbon dioxide into the ocean. We have this nice cycle going here. And so we've got, hey, we've got what happened to that nitrogen? We still got a bunch of nitrogen there. And we got a bunch of oxygen. And so our current four layers, in the first layer, we have mostly, mostly nitrogen, which might surprise you. Around 80%, not quite. Mostly nitrogen and some oxygen. around 20%. And there's other gas too, which we'll talk about briefly. So that's kind of a simple, quick picture to give you a sense of this cycle where you've got gas being released from inside of a hot world. And as it's released, well, it might just make a really nasty atmosphere. If it's cool, it's not gonna keep releasing the gas. Maybe the gas will fly off. Maybe it won't have any gas. Maybe it'll just have a little gas. Something could happen. So the atmosphere could change, right? With an ocean, you get an absorption, and then you get this process of creating ocean life and, and the breakdown of carbon dioxide, with carbon going to carbon-based life forms and the bodies of those carbon-based life forms and releasing oxygen back into the atmosphere, giving this. So that's kind of a nice cycle, not too complex. I think it's nice to sketch it out like this. And now let's talk about our current atmosphere and how it protects us, and three different processes in particular that are easy to get confused. So we'll talk about first about sun, what it sends our way, and then the layers of our atmosphere, and a little bit about what each one does, and greenhouse effect.